can you really get them timed so perfectly? I think it actually happens more often than you think because they don't blossom. They'll, they'll generally blo blossom in the early morning. Um, so it's not, as, it's not as impossible of, an, of a task as it may and seem. So what if you have to wait two days? Like the female is really close mm -hmm. and you know that the male has a few more days. Can you keep it closed, taped up for a few days? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Because I personally have never been that lucky with them, their timing. Yeah. I was wondering if you can collect the male pollen and put it in the refrigerator till you're ready to use it, or how long yes will the male pollen be viable? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's an, I was that's like, oh. Can you use a paintbrush? I, I've often used uh -huh. paintbrushes in the past where I just. Take I think the, you can. You can pollen. use a paintbrush, but I think it's actually easier to just use the, the whole flower. Yeah, just use it because you don't need it for anything else. Carol Depp's book, uh, back here in the back, in Appendix A, viability of oh, yeah. uh, of pollen. It says here most pollen becomes viable just shortly before its anther dehisses or sheds it. In general, it is normally maximally fertile and visible, viable right after it is shed. Some pollen continues to be viable for several days. Other pollen is dead within a few hours. Yeah, so they're short-lived. So maybe not the refrigeration bit. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps you addressed this earlier. I'm wondering when, when you uh, do the, the hand pollination, do you recommend doing it to just to more than one flower or all the flowers on a plant or I would do it to more than one for sure because it might not work. Okay. Um, would you want to do every flower that that's that you're keeping on a plant? I think it depends on you and your personal goals for your plants. So if you um, okay. would just want to save all seed and you don't want to bother eating anything, sure do it for every single one of them, but you probably, you know, I'm you probably want to eat something too. Um, but I think, but in that case though, let's say you get, you know, you make 10 different pollinations and they all work, you could probably sacrifice one of them. So I'd say do it as often as you can because, you know, this is a new process and you might mess up a few times and, um, or it might not work. So, and practice makes perfect, right? So I don't think you should say, oh, well, I, I did it once and there I'm good to go because it's, <laughs> it might not work out so well. Okay. This can actually, this actually works, you know, 80, 90% of the time, unless you're doing melons. I just don't want to give anyone false hope um, that apparently um, melons actually reject pollination like 20, you only get like a 20% success rate. How long do we keep the tape on the female flower once it's been pollinated? Forever, just leave it on there. Because it'll actually, um, it'll fall off as soon as the fruit gets um, mature or close yeah. to mature anyway. So that's why it's important to mark somewhere else on the stem because it's going to fall off on its own. Got it. um, and you'll know pretty early on if your pollination has worked um, because you'll see that that, oh, I just erased it, but that immature ovary is just not going to do anything and the flower will fall off and it'll be over. So you'll know within a few weeks whether or not it worked.